There you go. All so right. we are. There we are. Welcome to Collector's Catacomb it. number 26. Uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> right now, it's Dan and I. Um, we're hoping Drew's going to join. He's he's communicating. He might be fighting off a, uh, a Bigfoot, but you know, hopefully he'll come <laughs> on and join us. Um, we, we did hear from Brian. He is alive and well, but uh, I'm not sure if he's going to be joining tonight either. Um, but we figure we, uh, we come on, you know, between Dan and I, we have a couple items to share and, you know, whoever comes on afterwards wants to share their items, you know, so be it. Um, obviously Eric is going to be able to make it tonight. He's, uh, you know, got his new business up and running. So that's, you know, keeping him pretty occupied. Um, but that's, that's pretty much where we are for tonight. Uh, we did want to make a little announcement. Um, we do plan on. Uh, changing the uh, the format of the show, um, we're still kind of working out the uh, the odds and ends of it. But basically, I get lost here, Dan. Okay. Yeah, there was a bit of a glitch there. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so basically, I think we're going to go to a uh, uh, an every two week format. So basically, uh, we're going to have, you know, a show tonight and then our next show won't be for another two weeks. Um, you know, with the summer schedule, with Eric starting up his new business, um, you know, everybody's just kind of being pulled in five different directions. Um, and then, but the, the, the caveat to that is we're going to actually do a two hour show and, um, we're not sure of the timing We're we're, we're still kind of tossing back a start time. It may be a nine o'clock to 11 o'clock show where we make the same time. And do a 9 30 11 30 so and that is and that's yeah. east coast time it'll east be coast 6, time, yes. yeah. 6 30 west coast time that's correct and, that, <laughs> and therein lies the the, the conundrum the because yeah because us <laughs> east coast fellas we uh you know you guys are all kicked back you had uh, your dinner uh, you yeah, yeah, i'm ready for i'm ready and for I'm bedtime time. <laughs> and i'm like racing home from dropping off family members and racing right, home exactly. from work and it's like oh and i'm just you know it's like i haven't even eaten dinner oh, actually i did on my way I, my uh, the lateness today was because I was uh, on the middle of this. Uh, I'm short, we're short in some transportation in my home, so I am the chauffeur for the family. Uh, so I'm like running all over the place, and I get home and find out, oh no, you got to take him here, and then you gotta take this <laughs> one here, and I'm like, oh, I don't have no time. So I'm back out on the road, and I say, like, okay. <laughs> nah, I, I'm not looking forward to that. I, my, my children are. Uh... Five and three, so uh, we're, we're not at a point yet where well, uh, we're going to be juggling. Yeah. Start teaching them to drive now. So oh, I know. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 baby steps for me. I want to. I'm looking forward to when my son's old enough to mow the lawn. That uh, you yeah. know, that'll be that'll be a nice uh, a nice baby step for me, and you know, yeah. then we'll go into the driving thing. <laughs> so. But um, all right. Well, why don't we kick it off, Dan? I mean, you know, if you have some items you want to share, maybe some. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what you had in, in mind. Maybe some San Diego Comic Con stuff, or yeah, if you, you want know, to hold I, off. Yeah. I, I had like a little four day jaunt onto some interesting, uh, a little interesting experience here. I'm gonna hop over here to uh, screen share real quick. Um, that's not it. I want this one. So. Uh, I, uh, I met up with uh, Mr. Spock and uh, Captain Kirk and uh, our Star Wars buddies. And, uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I had some. I had fun. I go every year. My daughter and I have our father-daughter uh, kind of annual get together for four days, and we just we hit it hard and do all kinds of stuff there. So uh, my feet were killing me. My back's killing me. I still haven't quite recovered from everything on on this trip. But anyhow, um, yeah, it was great. Um, and, you guys are pretty good shatner, Let me tell you. <laughs> hey, the Spock too. Okay, let me tell you this. Uh, I'm 6'3". Wow. I'm, okay. I'm kind of hunched over a little bit because I'm shooting that laser gun. That guy, that Spock, is like over seven feet tall. Standing. Wow. So he's standing. We're not. I'm, he's not standing on the box. <laughs> wow. That guy is tall. Actually, his name, he goes by Vegas Spock. So I'm assuming, I, I tried looking him up, and I'm assuming he's from Vegas. But this guy is the best 
like Spock I have ever. He his voice is exactly like him. His it, no matter when you see him, his mannerism was like him. Uh, he had a booth and taking donations for a charity, and he would do special video stuff for you and take pictures with you and all kinds of. The guy was really good, man. <laughs> the guy was nice. really good. Uh -huh. So uh, anyhow, it, it's it, it was fun. I had, I had a really good time. But uh, just real quick though, I wanted to um, stop the share here. Real quick, I wanted to let uh, everybody know that I'm kind of I I, now, I talked to a few people and I started using Periscope. I don't know if you guys know what Periscope is. It's a it's actually a product of Twitter, but you don't have to have a Twitter account to use it. Uh, it's it's an app for your phone or your tablet or whatever. It allows you to do live streaming. It's a very simple live streaming mechanism when you're out and about and stuff. Uh, there is a there is some caveats about it. I mean. Uh, a lot of it is you got to have a decent bandwidth. Uh, the bandwidth has got to be. I hear. I hear myself. Do you have YouTube open? Uh, I have it open, but it's. I'm not getting any video coming through. Okay. I hear. I hear myself in your audio somehow. I'll mute, I'll mute myself. Maybe it's your mic. Oh no, I thought it was your. Anyhow, um, yeah. So the, the Periscope deal is really cool. So I have a Periscope account, and I'm still playing with it to learn how to use it, kind of get it going. So. Uh, I'm more old stuff. If you get on, if you get Periscope, it's free. You put it on your device. You can actually watch Periscope stuff from your computer. There's a uh, there's a website. I don't know if you. It's pretty. It's a pretty simple setup, and I'm not sure if you can like specify who you want to watch on it. But there is a way to watch Periscope videos and streams. But anyhow, um, so yeah. So there's a lot of other of the pickers um, are going out and using it when they go to thrift stores. Uh, I'm going to be using it coming up on the 26th heavily if I can get the bandwidth, which I think I will have um, at an auction that I'm going to. It's an all-day auction, a lot of primitives and rustic stuff and all kinds of good stuff. So I'll be doing some walkthroughs and showing what's there. I'll be off and on on it all day long, as long as my battery lasts on my phone. Uh, I'm going to be running it, so I'll I'll be using it for that. So. Uh, be cool to hang in there and you know if you want to follow me on that that'd be great that'd be fun and then you know maybe you like it too I know Angie who is I think she's in the chat she's become addicted to Periscope and you can follow Angie and her travels um, <laughs> and uh, it, it's just fun so it's a fun thing to play with so anyhow so I don't even know where to start I have so much stuff I uh, I'm, I'm gonna show you just part of a pile of books um, that I got. Um, my daughter was with me, and she's a she's the bookworm in the family more than I am. But you walk through the book area in the in the hall, and uh, they're just handing you books. People are just giving out books. Um, when she left here, I had to loan her a suitcase. She had 45 pounds of books. <laughs> she had to take back to. She's taken back home with her on the plane. So um, just enough to fill a suitcase. But not only did we get books, but we got them autographed by the authors too, which is very cool. So we could go in there and um, uh, uh, get in line, and you know, a lot of them are free. A lot of them are easy to get. Um, some of these books I paid. I paid for um, just to get the autographs. Uh, some of these are new. Um, new uh, releases and new stories that are potentially like this is going to be made into a movie from what I heard it's called uh, Ready, Ready Player, Player One. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. Yeah. So I got we met the author and uh, got it got it autographed and uh, I think my we ended up getting a hardbound and I got the saw because they were giving this book away actually it was free so um, somehow somewhere in here I had to get this one autographed. Oh no I got the hardbound. I got the hardbound autograph. But anyhow I got uh, Terry Brooks is one of my favorite authors, a fantasy writer, um, and he uh, he's got a series, mini series coming out on um, coming out on um, uh, 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 HBO. It's called uh, it's gonna be called the Shunara Chronicles. I think it's a couple three part mini series. But anyhow, so I got him. I've had some of his autographs already from previous events that I've seen him at. So I ended up getting his books and. And he and he also did a, a retail of the Phantom episode one, um, the uh, Phantom Menace. He rewrote it basically in his own style. So uh, I haven't read that one, but that's gonna be a cool one. Uh, got the you guys have probably heard of the the World War Z, you know about the zombies. There was a movie made of this. The guy's a comic book Max writer. Brooks. Yeah, I got him. Yeah. Got He's him uh, everybody know who he is. He's um. 
why am I drawing a blank? Uh, History of the World Part One, um, Spaceballs. Yep. Uh, why am I drawing a blank on his name? Um, what do you mean? Bob the the director, the director of those. That's his son. Um, oh, geez. Mel Brooks. Uh, Mel Brooks. Yes. Sorry. That's his son. I didn't. That's know his that. son. That's Mel Brooks' I son. So he wrote this book about uh, the, the zombie survival guide. So I got him to got him to autograph that one too. That's nice. Very um, nice. It's kind of fun, you know. This is just it is just something I didn't even plan on. I'm you walk through the hall, all of a sudden there's a guy sitting at a chair at a table taking autographs, and you know, hey, for you buy a book for ten bucks and get him to sign it. Did you read Roll War Z? Have you ever read that? No, I haven't. It's and a I, great book. It's nothing like the movie. Let me just tell you right now, it's nothing like the movie. It's it's a really good book, well worth reading. I actually I read it on my honeymoon. Uh, <laughs> Which I should have been doing on but how, how uh, old, on my, my downtime. <laughs> hey, hey Dan, how old uh, did Mel Brooks' son look? Um, probably forties. Okay, he's I think he's younger, be. Yeah. definitely younger than me. He was a younger guy, but he's probably in his mid forties, maybe early forties. From his probably from his first marriage, because later on he was married to Anne Bancroft. I, I think I got a picture of him. I have to dig through my photos because when I get autographs, I try to take a picture of the person who's signing yeah. at the time. This is kind of my thing. One, so I remember who it is because right. you know sometimes they write their name and you can't tell what they're writing. Yeah, exactly. So, so I, I take pictures of the like the sign on their table to know who they are and all this stuff, and I kind of keep it all straight because I have so many of these things. He's forty-two. He's forty-two, and his uh, he was uh, when Mel was born with, or married to uh, Anne Bancroft. Ah, okay. Or 43, okay. I'm sorry, he's 43. So, so he's that's, that's Anne Bancroft. Mom. Anne Bancroft is his mother. Yeah. That's correct. I didn't I, know that. How that's did he sweet. look? Did he look anything like Mel Brooks? No. No, not at all that I could tell. Well, he had a beard. He was kind of yeah, beardy his... and stuff. Wow. Here, I'll show you. Hold on. Yeah. He didn't look like it at all. That's why I, I didn't know. I didn't. I would have maybe recognized him, but I didn't know that. Luckily, he uh, luckily he took M. Bancroft's uh, characteristics instead of Mel's. Yeah. Last year, yeah, here you go. Uh, I saw him last year also. Oops, that's my Facebook. You don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him last year, and he did. He's done some uh, comic book stories and and, art, and comic book art. Oh yeah, that's, see, that's he's Max kind Brooks. of he had wow. he had facial hair this year when I saw him there. Wow, let me see that again. There we go. Wow. That might be a younger picture of him because he looks a little older than that. Yeah, let's see. see. There you go. Let's see if I can find. Him. Wow. There he is, zombified. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Mel Brooks, you can see him in delis, you know, around Beverly Hills from time to time, Brentwood. He, he gets around. Well, that's cool. that's cool. I didn't know that. That was neat. And then I have some comic books from last year that I had him sign because he does a comic book series also. And, and then this year he had the volumes of the series. I might have the books laying around here. But um, that's cool. All right. Um, moving on. Sure. Let the Schwartz be with Let you. <laughs> yeah, may the Schwartz be with you. <laughs> so, any of you who are probably old enough to remember this, did you remember the movie, the Flash Gordon movie? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. A guy by the name of Sam Jones played Flash Gordon, and uh, 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 Melody Anderson was in it. So, the other crowd might know it from the movie Ted. He, that's yes. a, he's a uh, he was, you know, he's he in the movie a, Ted and he had a walk on roles for both of the Ted movies. Yeah, I understand. And uh, he had a lot of other bit parts throughout, but he had probably more than most. But he was like Flash Gordon. Matter of fact, uh, I, I mean, let me. I can. I might be able to share. Uh, let me share this picture. I do have a picture. Real quick here. Let's see what we can do. Uh, that's not it. Uh, let's go back here. Yeah, let's go back out of this. And da, 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 da. so I did this like, yeah, this is the little collage I put together. So I got him. He was there signing, and you you go to the company that was selling these toys. You buy this toy, and then him and Melody go uh, sign. 
So I got some, and then he was pretty cool, got some pictures with him. There's what he looked like when he was really young. <laughs> And he was a uh, uh, what was he? Uh, um, he was a, from. He was like a surfer or something, something with the surfing or something. I thought he was a wrestler, like not a professional wrestler or something. And he was just you know, I don't think he had California. any acting experience. Yeah. yeah, he was from like Sacramento, and uh, I don't know his whole history. But anyhow, I got from her, which was interesting. I I got a chance to chat with her a little bit because you never I was looking her up on him you know M M D what is that M D B or M D B I M D B I M D B the movie thing is and she basically the last thing she did was in 1994. Um, oh, wow. So I asked her though well, you know say hey I you know you haven't been doing anything so what, what kind of what do you do and I guess she's a counselor for like family a family counselor and. Um, She's been doing it for a. She's got a degree and she's been doing counseling and stuff and it's got a kind of a thriving business going, I guess, as a counselor. So and then she goes to the cons and sells pictures and. <laughs> a little extra money, man. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. That's what she said. She goes, yeah, that's how I get my gas money. You know, so. Okay. But uh, anyhow, so uh, let's get back here. Oops. You'd be surprised how much some. I you know not the. Uh, you know, we have obviously we have uh, the Philadelphia Comic Con here. Uh, it's yeah. run by Wizard, and oh, yeah. you'd be surprised how much they charge. Like, you know, not not to talk ill oh. because you know, but the amount that they charge for an autograph, and then if you want a picture, you're paying a whole, you know, other price yeah. for that. It's 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 you know, it's some of them give me fifty dollars just for a picture and an autograph with the person. It is. It's really weird. It's all across the board. It's yeah. it's like. They have an odd, they have an open area where there's tables, lots of tables set up where there's these booths for autographs, and it's these people that have like bit parts in movies, semi important roles. Yeah. But it's if they were in a sci-fi movie, fantasy movie, horror movie, I mean they're all there. And I've gotten when I used to start when I when I started going like seven years ago, I started going to Comic Con. They were only charging like twenty bucks. You you could go over. You talk to them, they sign a picture, so you get the yeah. photograph for 20 bucks with their signature. They'll let you take a picture of them standing there with them, and yeah. so you get a whole package deal kind of thing, which is cool. But then it starts going up. I don't, uh, yeah. well, I don't I, get anything for $20. Now it's like $50, yeah, really? $50, and then uh, it's separate. It's like you this much for the picture, this much for the signature, yeah. this much for the picture taken with me. They, they have and a horror it, convention here in the Phil, or in, right outside of Philly, and... Uh, I wanted a picture of Rowdy Roddy Piper. Oh, I, yeah. I, the, the movie They Live. I mean, well, yeah. you know, if you're a kid in the 80s, you loved wrestling, and then the movie yeah, They yeah. Live. Um, so, I, you know, I, I, he was one of the main people at the event, and, you know, I waited in line, got my autograph, and I was like, can I take a picture with him? They're like, oh, well, it's another $10, but you can take a picture of him signing it for free. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I have to make their, their their money and all, but you know, you got fans coming up to you know meet with you, at least be a little yeah. you know accommodating, I guess. It's crazy. Yeah. It's 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 really crazy. I it kind I of put me off. Like, I'm like, I don't want to get an autograph now if he's you know I'm allowed to take a picture of him signing oh, it, but I can't oh, take a picture oh. with him. Let me know. tell you this. So I'm walking by this booth, which is a company run. Matter of fact, it's the same one I got the Flash Gordon autographs. And throughout the week, they had a different person in there certain times of the day. They sponsor them, basically. Well, guess who was there their first day? William Shatner was sitting oh, wow. in the booth, right? So you can imagine. He's like, you know, everybody wants to see William Shatner. So I'm walking by. Let you, you know, it's packed in there, and so the hallway is right in front of it. And people are walking by, and, I, and there's a cafeteria setting with tables just right across from it. So I walk by and I look in. I see, hey, there's 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 Shatner sitting in there. And I step into the cafeteria. I raise my video camera like this. Well, first of all, he's this area is surrounded by security people. There must be 15 security people there. I raise my camera like this, and every single one of those guys yelled at the top of their voice, "No photographs!" Like that. I was like, "Holy yeah. cow!" And it was funny. Everybody, everyone, it was like, "Oh my gosh!" They were all shocked that this. They would be so, you know, violent about yeah, it, you know. Yeah. All, all I'm doing is raising my camera. He thought I had pulled a gun out at this guy. <laughs> at this I mean, they couldn't have gotten gotten any more aggressive about yeah, it than that. Yeah. And so um, one of the Comic-Con guys was standing kind of off to the side, and uh, 
you know, you know he, he goes, goes, he goes, oh, don't, don't you know you're not allowed to take pictures at Comic Con? <laughs> What? That's just, no, you know. He, he was just, he was just. Yeah, yeah I was getting facetious, but yeah. So I mean, I, well, I'm, well, I'm like, whoa, this is, what, what do you mean? Like, Shatner doesn't make enough money that he can't, yeah. like, afford to let me take a quick <laughs> little video clip. And all I'm getting is, like, his head up sitting behind yeah. the table. I was like, I said, to get it. I'm not getting any more of this guy. I'm well, done with him, you know. Well, well today with, like, um, you know, you have the, uh, the, what's it called? Um, Google Watch or the i you know, the iWatch yeah. or whatever. You know, you can get away with doing that because yeah. Well, the the, the glasses they they kind of you can tell what they are in a lot of people. But yeah, if you had something, I don't know. It, it's you know, it's it's stupid. It's just absolutely stupid. Why would he care if somebody takes a picture? Of him? It's not like I mean, I don't know. I don't know what he's worried about. You know, it's crazy. So well, let me get on here. I got a lot of stuff. So I don't think it's him. I think it's the whole. Right, it's not his crew. It's every. It's the no, it is. It's his it's decision. Yeah. It's his decision. Every one of them had different policies, and it was the same company oh. that was sponsoring them. Like James, like Sam Jones, he didn't care. Matter of fact, um, if you bought the toy, he would autograph that for free. If you brought some of your own stuff to autograph, additional. He, would, he was going to charge you. But people were going up there with posters, and he was like, nah, I don't, I don't charge anybody. He would sign in anything you took up there to him. But and he'd let, you, he'd let you take a picture with him, and no, you know, and I didn't pay him a penny, you know, except whatever he made on the toy that I bought from the company, right? But, the, but Anderson, she had a pile of photographs. She was charging... Uh, she had to sign the toy because she was under contract with the company to sign the toy. But anything extra, take a picture with her. I had to pay her ten bucks to take a picture with her. Um, and then to sign another picture there was like ten dollars for this picture, ten dollars for this picture. So they're all different. They're all different. Anyhow, so um, it, the coolest thing that one of the things that I like about it, and a lot of people who go don't know this about a place like Comic Con. Comic Con is really really aggressive about bringing in new artists and, and uh, introducing new artists and entertain you know bring in uh, young people in to you know, experience Comic Con or, or get them in touch with artists for teaching and all that kind of stuff so I walk through the um, I walk through the uh, artist alley they call it and it's a, a lot of smaller tables where artists will come in and and they'll sit down there and a lot of them well, they're they're licensed to do other work. Like this guy was licensed to do uh, Star Wars type stuff. So he this is a Boba this is a Boba Fett, and um, an excellent. It's like this is the coolest picture. I'm gonna get these framed. I have like three of them. Um, then there's a guy that was doing these. Oh wow, nice. And these are like glossy print. Um, this is uh, his rendition of um, the. Uh, Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy. Of the Galaxy. And then there's um, there's a Spider-Man one. And now what these guys would do, sometimes they would be hired to work for a comic book company to do some of the line art or background art or coloring or whatever. So with that, they get licensing to be able to... Um, to be able to do some of this independent artwork of the characters and sell these things. And these aren't... We're getting an echo. Yeah, I think it's, I think coming, it's coming from here. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. It's coming back to your microphone somewhere. Okay, this is another one. I got a couple of these. And this is kind of a cool one. This is a uh, Supergirl and, and uh, Batgirl. Uh, hold on, I think that's it. Oh, here's a Batman one, this, of course. Got that one. I'm trying to keep the glare down here. But you know, this is the kind of stuff. There's a lot, and these weren't that. They're not very expensive, and I'm going to probably frame them and whatever. I might sell a few of them. Ben, Alf them. ben Affleck was there, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. They were. He was there at a panel. A lot of the panels, though, when you go to the panels, uh, you have to go into one of the halls that is only limited to about 2,500 people, and so you had to camp out like two days before in line. And I wasn't about to spend two of my four days at Comic-Con sitting in a line somewhere just to go see. And once you get in a room, 
2,500 people in a single room. If you're sitting anywhere 10 rows back, you can't see the stage and you can't see the people. You have to look up at video monitors. So it's like, why would I stay in line for two days to go watch a TV monitor when that night I can go home and watch the whole thing on YouTube because all of those sessions are on YouTube right now. You can watch all the sessions on all the movies and all everything. But, and they let you, they let you free fil uh, film just walking around the place. Yeah. Yep. But certain rooms, like Shatner, he didn't like it. Yeah, it wasn't a room. It was kind of, yeah, if you point it at them, they'll wave you off. They'll, like, in the autograph area, that was true for some of them. If you're walking around, you just lift your camera. And if they say no, they'll just say, please, no photographs, no photographs. They won't make, a, like, a huge deal about it. But um, <laughs> some of them don't care. I don't know. It's crazy. But um, this is a limited edition. There's, like, 1,500 of them. It's like a 20-inch uh, Boba Fett. All articulated, Jack Pacific, which is a well-known uh, toy company. I got two of these actually, and my the big toy. I got a Black Series. Oh. I don't know if you've seen this one, Eric. This is the Rancor. To try to get the no, I haven't seen that one yet. I've seen that the, there is a um, a Java one, but I haven't seen the whole Rancor set up and all of that. Yeah, it's got, uh, I think there's five characters in here. Let me see if I can get in here close. To, so Are you guys uh, still getting an echo on my part? I just want to know. No, no, yeah. not now. I unplugged, that's why. Cool. Um, this is, uh, yeah, I got Skywalker. We got the, uh, try to get right, Go back to Skywalker. I want to see what he looks like. So he's about, a, well, this is the small of this Black Series. Okay. The three and a half inch guys, you know. Oh wow. He's got a cloth, um, cloth material. And then, then, then the, the this is the big guy. This the Rancor's in there, and he's like filling this whole box. I'm trying to get a better. Oh, there you go. There you go. Trying to get a better view of him. It's like we're in the That's Rancor it. pit. Yeah, they go. Watch out. <laughs> 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 and then, well, God, I keep forgetting the name of these guys. Uh, Morian Guard. Morian Guards, yeah. <laughs> and he's got a couple uh, uh, spears and stuff. There's one laying on the ground right there that, nice. that they have with them. And then up here, let's see if I can find. Then you got Java. Very cool. And these are all to scale the same scale. And you got C3PO and uh, Leia, the slave Leia, and she's got a cloth uh, cloth drape on. So there's what three, four, five characters in this box, but that's nice. That's it's pretty big, good. It's a big piece. I mean, it's pretty. If you don't mind me asking, Dan, what did that retail for? Um, it I got it for one thirty, okay. but I, but right. later I'm seeing it selling on Toys R Us for one sixty, okay. and uh, it's on eBay right now for like two twenty five, and really? they're wow. selling at two twenty five because they're a limited edition. They're all. I was gonna say, were they were they a con exclusive or were they? Uh, yeah, it's a Comic Con Comic Con exclusive, okay. and they sold out of them. So I don't know unless there's any other yeah because this label this right here is the uh, uh, Comic Con uh, label that makes it an exclusive. So I don't know how many more they're going to have and how many they actually made. I tried to find out. I can't find out. The other one, the, the other Boba, Boba Fett, was uh, there were fifth, only 1,500 of those made. Okay, so, wow. And they sold out within – they actually didn't start selling them until like Saturday. And they sold out within like two days. So uh, they said the guy was telling me, uh, if we don't sell them out, we have to destroy them because we advertise them as a Comic-Con exclusive. We can't sell them anywhere else. Uh, so anything left, we have to destroy. And I go, well, there's no way you're, you're going to sell out. There's no way you're not going to sell them. Yeah. I'm cool. sure they don't destroy them. I mean, I'm sure they Yeah. Well, they, yeah I think he was trying to make a sale or something. I don't know. But um, so um, I got uh, various comic books. I have a long uh, list that I carry with me on my phone everywhere I go. And um, I find uh, special, uh, significant ones. Nice. This is, there you go. This is like an Iron Man. This is Iron Man 47. And it's kind of different because it's a re recount of how Iron Man came about. The origins. So, yeah, it's a new origin of that um, story. And then, um, and then I have to tell you another story here. For my, my last final story on this. So then I have like um, these. Uh, this is 120. These are Captain America's. So this particular one, this one here, uh, is the last 
uh, issue of a, the Silver Age Captain America, mm. and this is the first issue of the Bronze Age Captain Bronze America. Age. So I went from you know I'm sorry. No, yeah, no. I did it wrong. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on I got the numbers wrong. This, there you go. There, there you go. go. So That's 121 funny. and 120. That goes yeah. from it goes from uh, silver to bronze. So uh, yeah, and then this one I picked up because it is um, the first bronze. Oh, you know what? I have my labels wrong. That's why I'm reading on the background. <laughs> this one. Let me get this right. Yeah. My labels. This is a. This is because this is a, a Punisher appearance. It's an early uh, yeah. Punish, Punisher appearance. So he first appeared in uh, was it Amazing Spider-Man? Is it like 120 or something like that? I forget. No, yeah. it would have been than that. It would have been the three or no. I can't remember. I'm drawing a blank. So, so one of the things I do is in the mornings you go and you get in this line to they have now they have the like I told you about the open autograph signature area. You can go up there anytime, just pay them. Usually not a line, but the the, the heavy hitters like the the panels of uh, actors or the the TV shows they'll they'll do a panel and you so they limit they limit the number of tickets for that limit the number of signatures that, for the person. Then they have individuals also. So you go and you get in this line. I mean, as early as you can, and then you draw, like they have tickets in a bag, and these people are standing there with these little bags. You get in the line for the person you want to get the autograph for, and you draw from this little bag. Uh, if, if it's got a little happy face on the back, then you won. So now you get an armband, and then you can get it. Now they tell you to go at 3 o'clock, go down here, and this is where you're going to. So you're guaranteed a, an autograph from that okay. person. If you don't get the happy face, you can go all the way back to the back of the line, which is like two and a half miles away, <laughs> and you get back in it, and you work your way back again. And maybe if they don't run out of tickets by the time you get there, you get you get a second chance at it. But anyhow, um, so Stanley was signing oh, wow. uh, that morning, and so I got in line. My daughter pulled; she got nothing. I pulled, and I won! Yay! So I got a guaranteed Stanley uh, autograph opportunity. So um, I. Uh, now I didn't have anything with me because I wasn't really expecting to get this while I was down there. So I went back down to the hall and I spent three hours searching comic books and trying to find one. What would be like... So you bought Amazing Fantasy 15. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, no, man. Yeah, I went, like, you, found it, you found it a bunch of $1 books and you're books, like... Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> that was the biggest problem. I, I knew what I wanted because I have a list already on my list of, you know, and he's done so many of them. I mean, he's uh, so many characters, so many. So I was like, what would be like the the, 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 the quintessential, right, for me, for my collection, to have him put on and what would be affordable, of course yeah. Captain America was his first uh, product was Captain America, 1941 41. he yeah. invented, that, invented that character in 1941 so I thought, alright, I'm going to do Captain America that was his first one, now, you go try to find a number one Captain, or first appearance of Captain America, you're probably going to pay like $4,000 $3,000 or something Oh, more like that. than that If it's in a good shape, right? Yeah, or even yeah, close yeah, to good yeah. shape It's crazy, crazy yeah. So I'm like, oh, so I'm going and these, those, they were there, I could have bought one if I had the money I could have gone to, there were probably 40, 50, 60 uh, comic book dealers that had everywhere from $5 books to thousands of dollars of books, right? Yeah. So um, then I had to fit my budget in there. So I looked around, and what I ended up getting was um, I found a couple of them, but I got one kind of in my price range. So quality is probably not the best, but it's decent. Um, let me show you real quick here. Um, so I got this one. I ended up getting Captain America 109. Mm-hmm which is the origin of Captain America. So mm -hmm. it's a retelling of the origin, so I'm not getting number one, <laughs> but yeah. I'm getting number nine. And uh, this is what I got him to sign. He signed this one for me. I, it's like my $30 comic book <laughs> is what it is that I got and uh, ended up getting this. So um, I also took to Comic-Con my two number one Star Wars comics that I have, my Marvel Star Wars and I took them to CGC because they have a booth there. So by taking them there, I was able to save a little bit on the shipping halfway, you know. And they were given some special deals on you know, discounts. So I um, I was able to do that. And I did, and so I'm at, when I got this sign uh, at the table, and I I thought about getting signature series, which is a 
they'll, they'll, they'll authenticate the signature as well as grade your comic book. It's kind of a new, it's a new thing they just started not too long ago. Um, so what hap so what happens? I'm, I get it signed, and there is a CGC witnesser <laughs> standing at the end of the table, and he kind of grabs me right away. He says, "Hey, would you like to get that, you know, certified and signature certified?" And I says, uh, "Yeah." So anyhow, uh, uh, the guy was wearing a shirt, a CGC. Uh, shirt, so I kind of assumed he was uh, authentic, <laughs> and uh, then I, uh, you know, he told me what it was all about. I knew, I kind of, I knew what it was all about and everything. So I says, "Okay, go ahead." So I wrote my name and phone number on the back, and I handed it to this guy, and he walks off with my book. So I'm like, I go and I sit down, and I'm like, "You know what? I never got this guy's name," and I'm like. I don't even, this guy could just be anybody standing there <laughs> at, the, at the end of the table, right? And just, That's a good idea. <laughs> and he's just walking off with my books. And I'm going, no, wait a minute. That was a secured area. They wouldn't have let just anybody back there. So I'm trying to talk myself out of this, you know, to make myself not panic. And my daughter's with me going, oh, my gosh, what did you do? Did you just hand your sign, Stan Lee, off to somebody? So I'm like, okay. Um, I went down to the booth, and I says, hey, I, this is what happened. And they went, yeah, no, that's legit. We have our guys up there. But they have a company. There was a company that had their own booth. Uh, Anastasia was the name of the company. And all they do is... All they were doing while they were there was uh, Stan Lee's autographs. So you could take a pile of, of you know, books to them, and um, and hey, am I am I not sharing my screen? Sorry. No, you're not. Oh crap! I thought I was sharing my screen. <laughs> what happened? I thought I was saying you were showing the comic, so but I just yeah, yeah, yeah. Up eventually. <laughs> I must not have did something right. Sorry about that, folks. There you go. <laughs> There we okay, go. so All right. <laughs> so um, yeah, so uh, the uh, uh, what was I saying? So anyhow, so I, I got him checked out. So basically, I went down later and I fill out the paperwork I needed to do. So uh, I got to wait three and a half months before I actually get this book back. <laughs> oh really? Also, I got about three months for my uh, my Star Wars books also. Uh, I guess they're just super backlogged. Well, for I would imagine with Comic Con, yeah, or probably. <laughs> oh, there were guys. There were guys walking up there with. I mean, 50 comic books, and setting them down and going, hey, I want the, all these graded, you know. And and a lot of them were brand new comic books, recently released. And a lot of guys have been doing that. If it's got something special about them, you know, like it's got a first appearance or potential for a movie or something like that, they'll get them CGC. So they, right now, because they're brand new books, they're they're the lowest price you can get them CGC. And then you know, who knows? They might. 100 times their value, who knows, they do it investor, it's like an investing thing for some of these guys, so um, I kind of in a part, part way with that, I do I, I do some of this and I'll resell, but some of it I keep for myself, this is this is one I'm keeping for myself, <laughs> I'm going to keep this one, no, I don't blame you, but it's, it's pretty cool, and then, oh, and we're talking about pictures, so I'm in line for Stan Lee, they say, He's not going to be. First of all, you can only get one thing signed. I had I had purchased like you saw these other books. I had all these in my backpack because I was ready to have them sign every single one of them if they'd let me. Um, he said no. They said no. One item only. Uh, you can't uh, you can't take a picture with him. I says oh bummer. Okay. They wanted to move it fast. Basically is what they wanted to do. Uh. So I get in line and he comes walking down the hallway and I have my video camera and I'm taking video of him walking in, sitting down. Everybody's cheering for him and everything. And he sits down. And uh, so then I put my video camera away and I the line zigzags and as I get closer to him I pull out my cell phone and ready to take a picture. And right away they go oh please no photographs of him. He would please no photographs. And I'm like everybody's like you're kidding me. I can't stand here in the line uh. with a picture of Stanley. So I wanted to get a picture of him signing my book because that's my, my tradition, <laughs> what I do. But, um, yeah, couldn't do that. So that's all I got. So I got a video clip. I may just throw it up on my YouTube channel. <laughs> so here's my, here's my Stan Lee encounter. I, uh, don't, it, you know. I don't get it. I don't understand. I mean, you know, I, I guess, you know, I'm not a celebrity, so I don't understand, but <laughs> well, what's the big deal, you know? What, what's the difference? <laughs> I mean, he all he's doing is sitting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Signing yeah. books. There's two guys on either side of him. One guy's taking the next item and getting it prepared for him. You know, like he'll open it up if it's a book, or he'll he'll align it. He'll slide it in front of him. He never lifted his head. He had his head down the whole time, just going bam, bam. It's like it's like it was really fast. I mean, there were probably oh, I'm gonna guess there were probably 150 people in line, 200 people maybe, um, and 
we went through that line in 30 minutes. It was like quick. It was just like bam, bam, bam. People were bringing posters. People were bringing books. People, and this is, they're going to kick themselves. They were just having him sign their Comic-Con badge because they didn't have anything or they didn't, uh, think, okay. ahead. They didn't think ahead, you know? And I'm like, I'm like, okay, you're going to kick yourself when you realize that you could have gone downstairs, bought a decent comic book for minimum uh, expense and had him sign one of his own work instead of the stupid Comic-Con badge, you know? Uh, but that was crazy. Whatever. I guess it depends on your, uh, your your outlook on it, you know. If, if yeah. I, I save, I'm the type of person, I save every badge and ticket. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> you know, all that stuff, you know, every movie that I've been to for, uh, you know, as long as I can remember. Uh, I, you know, that'd be pretty cool. If you didn't have something, you know, and or, you know, think ahead of time, you know, who knows, they may have spent all their money. <laughs> ah, <that's true. laughs> and, oh, and yeah. just like, oh, crap, I know I got to get something for them to sign. I didn't think I was actually going to, you know, have the opportunity to, to, to get an autograph from him. I did, I did say something to him when I dropped this off. I go, I go, I go, sir, you are the origin of Captain America. And then, <laughs> yeah. and then he kind of, he kind of smiled. He looked at, he's the only time he lifted his head. He lifted his head and he smiled and he goes, well, thank you. You know, and then I, and then we went, we went on. So I got a, a little bit of a rise <laughs> out of him. But, you know, I got a little bit out of him because I spoke to him. Nobody was speaking to him. They were just kind of being rushed through. So I said, I'm not going to let him treat me like this. I'm going to say something to him. You know? <laughs> But I, I guess he had been in the hospital. Um, he got put in the hospital a couple of weeks ago, so he's probably not feeling very well. I'm sure, and having to do all the stuff because you know he's at this event. He's uh, he's doing all kinds of stuff. You know, meeting with people and you know doing stuff. But whatever. All right. So um, I guess that would be the highlight of my uh, my uh, list of ever, stuff here. Did you ever see the episode with the Big Bang Theory where he's on there? I think oh, yeah. I have. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's hilarious because uh, Sheldon goes to his house. Uh, that's right. He gets. <laughs> Stanley gets really angry that he went to his house and and, and, and interrupted his personal time and you know. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's just, you gotta watch that. So well, they, they were going it. to comic. Weren't they? They were going to Comic Con, weren't they? Uh yeah. Oh, here, oh, here's what it was. Yeah. Uh, Sheldon had some other arrangement where he couldn't go to Comic Con for some reason. That's right. And then, yeah. So he got mad that the other guys had got their stuff autographed and pictures taken, and so he he convinces uh, whoever to take him over to the house to his house, and uh, he ends up you know calling the police on him. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. He you know he's on he does he. I don't know if it's him. I would imagine that he's got a pretty good sense of humor, and he's you know, I mean, he's in the entertainment business, and yeah. you know, and he knows how to work it, and you know, because he goes to all these events. You know, he's got his own event actually in October, um, Kamikaze. It's called Stan Lee's Kamikaze, nice. and uh, it's his own uh, comic book event. And I was going to try to go last year, but uh, this year I might try to go this year. It's up in uh, Anaheim. Um, I think Anaheim or the Los Los Angeles Convention Center, one of the two. Um, but it's up north there, so smaller event, easy to get around. Which I would is, imagine because yeah. because I'll tell you what, man, that place is packed. I, I I'm putting together some video because I took a lot I've, of video. Yeah, I've heard it's a nightmare, Comic Con, just to navigate and get in. You're just standing in line a lot, and yeah. Like, well, the know. bummer the bummer about it is like, okay, you go to Disneyland and you stand in line for two hours. You know that in two hours you're going to get on this ride. I mean, let's yeah. it. You know you're something you're getting for. But you get in a line at Comic-Con and they run out of whatever it is you're in line for and now you're done. Yeah, you or they shut the door waiting. on you <laughs> and say, you can't get the panels full. Sorry. Uh, You've been here three, four hours. Sorry. Go find something else to do. Well, and I heard to, people would wait in, for the first panel. <laughs> And then because they don't kick out the people from the last panel, they you can just right. sit there and yeah. all day, and you know basically if you, as long as you get there early and you sit through yeah. it all and wait for the Star Wars panel to come or whatever, I yeah. think it's Hall H or something like that yeah. where they have all the Hall H is the one. Yeah, yeah they, so. they were selling T-shirts there that said the big. It was a big H, like the like the sign that's above the door of Hall H, and it says yeah. I survived. I survived the Hall H line <laughs> and all this stuff because you know, everybody's been there. I stopped going. Going to Hall H about two years ago yeah. for that same reason because it was when Game of Thrones actually three years ago Game of Thrones was really you know 
you know, rise on the rise, and the, the series had just started on HBO, and I had read all the all the books, so I was already I knew the whole storyline. So I got in line to go see the All H Game of Thrones panel. I got in line. The panel started at three o'clock. Um, I think I got in line at eleven. 10, 30, or 11, so I, I was in line for like three hours or something right. like that, and I got finally to the zigzag line, because they start you about a quarter of a mile down the harbor behind the convention center and um, on the sidewalk, and then you make your way up to the zigzag line, which is in the grass, which is nice because you can sit down. Um, I got up to the zigzag line, and they finally come out and said, if you're thinking you're going to get into you know Game of Thrones, forget it. No one's coming out. So people go, have gone into sessions before and gotten there early enough, and they don't they don't get out of their seat, and then pff, you're screwed. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and I spent four hours of a day of one of my days at Comic Con sitting there in line, and I says I'm never going to do this again. So <laughs> um, so I you know did other things where I could got a lot more accomplished. I got autographs. I got you know found cool art. I you know I met people, got pictures of other people. You know it, it was. Way better than waiting for that, spending a whole yeah. day. Well, I, that's probably how I'd go too. I, I wouldn't be <laughs> online for that long unless there was somebody or something that I really needed to have, you know, just to complete the experience. Yeah. I would just, I would, just, I think I would just be in awe walking around the place, looking at the vendors, and you know, even staring at Shatner from a distance. Or you know, <laughs> well, you know, did you hear this year what they did for Star Wars? They they did a Force Awakens panel. And they had uh, it's on YouTube actually. You can watch the there's a really there's some nice uh, videos of the whole panel session. Yeah. Uh, J. J. Abrams, uh, what's her name, Kennedy, and Lawrence, the right one of the writers. Mm -hmm. uh, they were there. All six of the new actors in the new movie were there. And then they brought out Carrie Fisher, Mark Hamill, and Harrison Ford. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. They were all on the at the table. They do their question answer and they tell their little stories and everything and that was kind of cool but then at the end they said well one of the big things about Star Wars that's made it so special for all the movies is the music so what we thought we'd do is do something special for everybody and we're going to put on a Star Wars we got permission from the city of San Diego to use this giant park that's sitting behind the convention center and we're going to do a Star Wars concert and everyone in this room is invited and, and can go right now. We're going to open the doors. We're going to give you this ticket that will allow you to go straight over there, and we're going to start the concert in about 20 minutes. So, and then while they were over there, they got lightsabers. They gave them all lightsabers to play with while they were over there. So that would have been a really unique experience to be able to wow. do that in the Hall H and then continue your night over listening oh, yeah. to all Star Wars music with all these Star Wars fans and everything. That would have been really cool. So that might have been worth the wait had I known that, right? You know. Oh yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Uh, they don't often do that kind of stuff, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. Hey, Dan, we got a question from Picking Picking Ain't Easy. Um, it's asking, are you going to Back to Future Con this year, October 21st in LA, 30th anniversary? And he's saying he would love to go, but he's in Florida. Ooh. Where's it at? It's, a, uh, it's, in, it's in LA, October 21st in LA. It's the 30th anniversary. That would be interesting. I never heard of that one. Uh, I'll make a note of that. Uh, October the 21st. Yeah. Back to the Future Con, huh? That's gonna be interesting. Yeah, I know a um, I know a uh, a military dealer who um, his other part, his other his other, he's pretty you know pretty big dealer, but his other uh, um, interest is Back to the Future, and he has a full replica. Um, oh really? Uh, I'm having a brain fart tonight, fellas. Uh, what's it called? The car. <laughs> oh, the the DeLorean. DeLorean, Jesus, yeah. yeah. So he's got a full replica of DeLorean with all of the, you know, made up like like it would be for Back to the Future, a flux capacitor, you know, Mr. Fusion, all that stuff. So, oh, you know why October the twenty first is Back to the Future Day? Is that the is that the date that they? It they must put have been. Uh, yeah, that's right. October twenty first, nineteen eighty five. I would guess so. Yeah. Yeah. So that they're going to do a convention, huh? That's cool. I'll have to look into that. Yeah. yeah, I, you know, I went to Celebration this year, but I wanted to go to WonderCon, which is like the week before, uh, and it was like, whew, everything was so close together, it was like, man, I could barely afford to 
you know, to go. I mean, it's easy uh, to get tickets and go, but he spends so much money on stuff, you know. It's yeah, like, yeah. it's so hard. It got to be Sunday. I go, man, I got to get out of here. I'm spending way too much money on Sunday. And my daughter says, yeah, me too. So we finally, <laughs> and we were exhausted from walking everywhere. But, um, yeah, it was it was about time, so. That's um, like me. There's two there's two military shows. There's a show of shows, and then there's a Mac show. And the show of shows is in Kansas City, and it's just, it's supposed to be the, the biggest military show in the U.S., happens once a year, and I'm just like, you know, it'd be cool to go to, but I would need to bring, like, you know, a couple grand with me to make it worthwhile, oh, yeah. because, you know, between lodging and all that stuff, you've already put out a bunch of, I mean, it's easy, you know, for you, at least you're, you know, in the vicinity, for me, I'm either, you know, yeah. driving or taking uh-huh. a plane there, and then, you know, to, to make it worthwhile while you're there, you, you know, you want to have some money and have fun and be able to buy, yeah. and buy stuff and you know, all that. So you, you really just need to start saving like a year in advance yep. to make it worth your while for, you know, when you go. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. So, you know, I think that's, that's about all my goodies that I can right. share with you. It took up a whole 45 minutes. Yeah, that's whatever. good. That's fine. Well, thanks, Dan. <laughs> um, some, some great stuff. Um, why don't we kick it over to Drew? Drew, do you have any items you want to want to share tonight? It's a reminder, you're on mute. <laughs> Where's our fearless leader tonight? I uh, know. He's working. Working the business. Okay. Gotcha. So I found this at a little thrift store. It's a vintage rally, Hot Wheels rally case. Nice. And uh, it has some cars in it. I was hoping that they'd be red lines, but they're not. But they're decent. And there's a... See, one, two, three, Can you four, explain to uh, some who might not know what the red line refers to? I think it's the tire. Yeah the, yeah, the red line is on the tires, you guys. These do not have red lines around them. But the tire, the red line occurs right here on the tire. It's just a little pinstripe. And uh, it usually defines the 60s and 70s from the you know later eras, the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So you kind of want the red lines. Those are the ones you actually want. And I have a whole collection of red lines. Um, I have about 40 red lines probably still today. And they're all from the 60s, late 60s, uh, because Hot Wheels came out 68. Is that right? Uh, Sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, these are all kind of like made in Malaysia. You really want the ones that are made in Hong Kong or the United States. Those are going to be the older ones. But Malaysia... And then later on, they, they went to all kinds of other countries. But, um, you know, a nice little array of these Hot Wheels. And I really bought it just for the case, actually, because I have the collection, and I wanted to have a nice little case to sell them or to put them in, you know. When I'm ready to sell them, they, they'll, they'll go well in this case. This is 1968. Uh, it's marked Mattel 1968 there. Nice. Um, let's see, what else? Neat little collection of, uh, some geodes, some, uh, geological stone formations, crystals inside rocks. Um, these are rocks that somehow, you know, become hollow, and then the, the, um, I guess the water gets in there and makes all this crystalline structure. I think that's how that works. And sometimes you'll cut these open. You know, they'll just look like rocks, just like that. You know? And you'll cut it open, and that's what you'll have. These are not the same from the same rock, but those are neat. And then I came across another one that's mounted, really nice one. This is kind of... This is kind of more what you want, the really nice colors. Really nice blue. And on the back. Yeah, those are cool. Uh, little little fine for $3. These are all in a, a thrift shop, too? So? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, came from Goodwill. This one came from Goodwill. The others came from somewhere else. And uh, these do really well at the swap meet, etc., or online. This thing probably be like 20, 25 to 30, somewhere in there, mounted. These other ones probably, you know, 10 bucks. 
something like that. Not not that we're talking price, but let's see. Then I couldn't resist on this. Um, you know, it's the ladies that buy a lot of stuff at the swap meets and the booths. You know, they just drag their boyfriends and husbands along. But this was a neat little purse, and it had these cool patches. And I thought I wanted to buy this thing and let you see these patches. Let's see what they are. Tell me what they are. The oh, one of the yeah, upper right is an Air Force rank chevron. Uh, to the left, that one is an infantry Chevron, but I think that might be um, Marine Corps. And then the middle one, I'm not even sure what that is. Effective Security Systems Inc. That looks like a police, police, uh, or Sarasota. I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, looks like a badge. Yeah, there's one over here from. Yeah. Yeah, lift that. Uh, yeah, that looks like an Air Force or Army Air yeah. Force. Yeah. Or not Army, I'm sorry, U.S. Air Force. Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah. And uh, I just thought, you know, the girls are going to buy this in a hot second. I just thought it was caught my eye with those old patches on it. Yeah, that's cool. <clears throat> yeah. Nice old, I mean, not old, but old-looking leather. You know, it's got that groovy look, you know. Uh, I was and, seeing... and, 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 and no rare patches were destroyed, so that's nice to see. Cause... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh... And let's see, uh, this was a nice find today. A nice waterman, a green waterman. Ooh, that's good. Pen. Yeah. And it seems to not be all blown out. I mean, this is, it's got yeah, its I don't, little... I don't ever lift those things up. <laughs> yeah, I know. But <laughs> you know, what's, they good? Always, they like you know what's good, Dan, is it, it's, it's loose and free, so the bladder is either yeah. already been broken through or not, but yeah. it's... It, yeah, it... it and it slides back in there. It's kind of interesting. It pops out and then slides back. Oh, huh. Got a little depression Push in, the it down. Top of the, in top of the Bakelite right there. To lock it down. Huh? And lock it down. Huh. And uh, I haven't cleaned it up at all, but I'm going to clean up this nib. Um, hold on a second. Sorry. And that's actually really easy because that's just ink that's dried on there, and that yeah. comes off really easy. Yep, and uh, yeah, that was a good find. And it has this Waterman marks on the on the on the caps on here. And uh, I don't know if the I don't think the nib is gold, but I'm not sure. I'll have to clean it up and see. But it has a nice little collar around here. Just a nice find. I I would be surprised if it's not 14 karat gold because that's a nice pen, and I would think that. Yeah, I would think that that's 14 karat gold nib. Yeah, and since uh, Eric is not here tonight, ten dollars I got this for. <laughs> <laughs> and these kind of things sell for around 75 to 100 or more, don't they? Yeah, I've yeah, seen. I'm looking online, and there I'm seeing some pretty pricey ones, but yeah. obviously yeah. I'm not too familiar with. Um, <clears throat> You know the you style. See? You know what style yeah. you have specifically. After you know, it looks like this is that green. This is a green marbleized bakelite, uh, and then it's got these little special little details around here. I, I'm seeing one similar to yours that sold for three hundred and seventy-six dollars. <laughs> oh yeah. <baby. laughs> but again, I don't, I don't know. I've seen. You know, I'm I'm just not sure what what you know. Because then there's one at, at the low end that sold for. Oh my. Like thirty-two dollars. So I just don't know what the difference between that low-end one and uh, the high. You know. Awesome. And then I did a little dumpster diving, and my, for my world famous famous dumpster, I found these. And they're maps from uh, the United States. Uh, some. It's like a Civil War era. Division, yeah. This is Civil War maps. Well, probably not Civil War era. I would imagine. Right, no. Yeah. These are um, maps of Civil War battle locations for the United States uh, Department of the Interior, and they made these uh, Civil War locations national parks, uh, and they had to have these maps to show where visiting centers were and how it all related to the location and et cetera, et cetera. They had to, you know, 
show where the visiting centers and where the food, you know, concessions, were, whatever it was. And yeah. these are from these are from 1963, and I found a whole horde of them. This particular roll has. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. And this battle is from Battle of, uh, I think it's Lexington. This one's Spots, Spotsylvania. This is close by you, isn't it? Yeah, uh, somewhat. It's still a, a little bit of a drive, but close enough. Closer than, closer for me than you. <laughs> yeah. It says Troop Movements Map, Spotsylvania, and it's 1963. And there's a whole horde of these. Let me show you. I mean, okay. I found okay. all these in the trash, and one roll has, I think, 12, and then the other ones have five apiece. Nice. But they're different. Uh, I mean, I'll just take them out. What the hell? Different battle locations. Yeah, like, I don't in know what... like in Gettysburg, I mean, you could you could spend two days, if not longer, trying to identify every monument that is in the area. And you're talking about a small area, you know. Yeah. But, you know, there's just monuments everywhere, you know, throughout there. And actually, you know, when I was in Scouts, the thing you did a scavenger hunt, and you had to find so many monuments, and you know, do like a rubbing on it or something like that. But yeah, you'd be surprised how many. You know, just in, just where one battle occurred, which you know, get the Battle of Gettysburg was you know a short, you know, for the most part, short battle, and then you know you can see on those maps how many you know different monuments and you know. Interesting. Uh, there's there's 27 of those, and they're they're roughly like uh, what six, uh, what about 16 by 20, mini little posters. And so you do the math, 27. I mean, that's a hell of a find in the trash. Man, nice. Did you look up who who, who, who was the uh, the printer on that? Did you find any information on that? Or uh, no, this is the United States of America. No, it's just well, okay. So it's just I don't know if it was you the know the government. The government printed these. Okay. There doesn't right. seem there doesn't seem to be any kind of um, uh, retailer on this. Okay. Or a merchant attached to this. I'm thinking that they they used to sell these possibly at these locations. Possible. So maybe a tourist. Um, but why I found 27 of them, don't ask me. It's really amazing. <laughs> it's just incredible. And uh, probably so, the same Boy Scout Boy Scout leader that threw all the patches away. In yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> now this next item is pretty darn special because. It's going to easily be the oldest item that I've shown on the Collector's Catacomb. Possibly even the oldest item I've ever shown on California Pickin, my channel. And it's pretty... Now, it's not super, super valuable, but it happens to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,800 years old. Oh, wow. It's a rock. <laughs> and it's, oh. Uh, it's a genie lamp. It's a, it's a, it's it, yeah, it's it's a little Middle e Middle Eastern, most likely a Jewish. There's nothing on it that's Jewish, but oil. I've, yeah. I've owned one of these before, and let me go to my let me go to my screen share. Uh, are you seeing something now? We're Jimmy. seeing Dan. Now you're seeing me. <laughs> okay. All right. Go to screen share. And then click on, uh, click on share the whole screen, and then you have to open up the tab that has your. After you share, then you have to go click on the tab that has your. Okay, you there we go. There Here's we up. go. All right, so these, this is some examples of these, you know, fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred year old lamps. Oh wow! From the Middle Eastern re I found this thing today, guys, at a thrift store. Look, there's one for two hundred dollars, one for one thirty-two, and then some for very, you know, little little money, uh, twenty and thirty dollars here. But look at these things. Oh wow! And to to think about who 
this thing is as old, almost as old as Christ. It's just phenomenal to run upon something like this. Absolutely incredible. Now the, now, the reason I recognized it and I knew it was good was because I had bought uh, one of these before, and I knew what this was, and I looked with a, with a very you know, intense magnifying glass, and I could see there's heavy cut crustacean, like on some of these. Here, this one's probably been buried for who knows how long. But that's 1 to 200 A.D., you guys. To think of the hands that this thing passed through of just mind-blowing. Let's go to another one over here. Here's one that's pretty similar. And you see all this crustacean kind of stuff? You see all that? Yeah. That's kind of hard to fake. And so they do make new ones of these, but their terracotta is really kind of bright, and, and, and you can just tell the difference, at least I can. And so when I, um, so when I found this, sorry, let's see, screen share, come on. When I found this, I was just really excited. And basically, you know, you had no lights, and, and you used to, when you needed to go to the bathroom, you would take this little thing with you, and it would light your way. Or you'd read, or you'd read by it. And uh, here's the back. It's got a cross symbol. So this could be early, I don't know, Christianity could be, could be later. It's really not a true cross, though. It's just kind of a... A, you know, cross form. It doesn't look like a, a a religious cross per se, but the one that I had before uh, was from Israel. So I assume that this is from similar regions or Middle Eastern, anyway. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, that's absolutely. Really cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when do you run into something that's almost as old as Jesus? It's just <laughs> insane. Yeah. And got a great deal. I mean, how much can you, you know? They didn't know what it was. <laughs> and I wasn't about to the tell them. They thought some kid made that in yeah. a camp. <laughs> craft, 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 craft class. Yeah. It's, isn't that incredible? I mean, that's a that's probably a keeper. Or if I want to get rid of it, you know. Absolutely. It's just, it's just a cool thing. and um, So I think that's it for me this week. Well, thanks, Drew. That was awesome. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, so pick, pick an ain't easy. Asked, so she, I said, uh, he said something about my cool BB-8 shirt. This is actually made by Ripped, Ripped.com. They only make so many of these shirts, then they take so many orders, and then they sell them for like a 24-hour period, and then they're done. Uh, this, is one of the, uh, this is the first reference to The Force Awakens on a T-shirt that I have seen since they announced the movie. So they don't have to do licensing because they do they they do uh, mashups. So they've got like they got um, this this images of uh, Harrison Ford being Indiana Jones. You know the scene where the boulders coming down on his head, yeah. and, all that, and then instead they've got this oh, wow. BB-8 rolling down <laughs> on him. So it's kind of a mashup kind of thing. I don't know how they get away with the licensing thing for printing these kind of shirts, but hey, they're selling them. Doesn't say anything about. Star Wars or anything on it. It's just the image of this. Oh, very <laughs> this, cool. is, this is the new robot, by the way. This BB-8 is going to be the new R2-D2 basically for the new Star Wars movie. It's a new design of a robot they got. <clears throat> very cool. Yeah, and from what I heard, they that's all done... Um, it's not CGI. They actually no, did it's, all... it's a real, yeah. yeah. It looks a little chubby. <laughs> <laughs> what, this, this part... <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it looks like a weevil, you know, weevil wobble. You know, but you know what's cool? Uh, if you go back on YouTube, there's the at the uh, Star Wars celebration. This came out on stage, and it is actually a ball with another half of a ball on top. And this top piece, the bottom piece actually rolls, and the top yeah. piece floats like on top of it as it goes. It can go all different directions. But it's it, the weirdest looking thing. It's like, no, how in the heck did they do that? Be mag they, magnetic or something like that. Yeah, they, they oh, ripped man. off. They ripped off the Dyson vacuum. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, that's what it looked like. 
<laughs> okay, go ahead, Eric. All right, very cool. But real um, quick, though, I may have to leave in about five minutes, so no, I'll, no I'll say quick goodbye later and I'll have to go. i got to go do my chauffeuring job here. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I may have to ask you a question because I don't know how to, once we stop this, how to share it to YouTube, so. Uh, it'll automatically, as soon as you, as soon as you, um, Stop, Stop broadcast. the broadcast. It'll in a few minutes. It'll it'll uh, upload itself and be live on. It'll be available on YouTube. Okay. All right. You all don't right. have to do anything. All right. And then the screen the screen share does it automatically pick that or because I, I noticed that sometimes I guess Eric chooses one or yeah you there you get three options if you go into the edit. Uh, I gotcha. And you can okay. choose which one you want. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Easy enough. All right. Um, I uh. I, I actually the other day, I guess two days ago, I was just uh, I had to go actually pick up some medicine for my daughter, and I figured while I was out, I'd uh, hit a couple of my uh, my favorite places where I usually find some you know odds and ends. Uh, so the one shop I went to, um, I found uh, this is kind of you know not something I'm usually into collecting. I collect military, but uh, this is actually British, and so it was this. What's called a flash, and then a, a pair of these two patches, which are called. Um, let me pull up my notes because uh, they're called formation patches. So this would have been worn on the shoulder, and then above that you would have had the flash, you know, like that. So the the the, the flash is for the Royal Fusiliers, which I probably destroyed that name, but. Um, and the Royal Fusiliers were an infantry regiment in the British Army, which were established back in 1685. Um, they weren't known as that. They, they had some predecessor names and then, you know, eventually became known as the Royal Fusiliers. Um, and then in 1968, they actually merged with two other regiments to become the Royal Regiment of Fusiliers. So, so with that, I'm able to determine that this would date to sometime before 1968. Um, you know, I just haven't been able to really, you know, confirm that. But it's, uh, you know, embroidered on felt. Um, you know, pretty nice, pretty nice looking patch. It's pretty clean. You know, especially for being, you know, at least, uh, you know, 45 years old, if not more. So, and then with it were these two patches, and you can see there's a camel, and you have a, a red, red felt on top and blue felt on the bottom, and then on a the reverse. It looks like it was kind of hand constructed. Um, you, know, you can kind of see the side where you know it's yeah. multiple pieces. Um, so these are actually for the General Headquarters Middle East Land Forces, and uh, this was established post World War II. There was a predecessor to this that um, you know the British Army had set up in the Middle East, but this was their peacetime headquarters in the Middle East, um, established in 1947 and stationed in Cairo, Egypt. Um, and then the insignia was actually redesigned in 1953 and they removed the camel and replaced it with a lion. So with that I can kinda date this patch to sometime between 1947 and 1953. And then, you know, based on the construction, uh, you know, most of the British patches I've seen are, you know, are, are printed. Um, so, you know, kinda based on this construction, I, I'm I'm under the assumption that this is probably a theater-made patch, so it was likely made somewhere in Egypt, um, you know, for a, a British soldier who was stationed there. So I thought that was pretty cool, you know. And this was, you know, again, you know, this was from the 40s in Egypt, you know, for a British soldier, and then somehow made it to, uh, you know, Pennsylvania. You know, curious to see how that happened, but you know, I'll, I'll never know, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, so in the same shop. Uh, I have a, a real affection for this medal. Whenever I see them, I have to pick it up. And this is the Army Good Conduct Medal. And nothing special. It basically, you know, to, to earn this medal um, during World War II, you had to have had service for one year in the U.S. Army, and then post World War II, um, it was for three consecutive years of service in the Army with, you know, uh, with no no issues, uh, you know, good conduct, you know, et cetera. Obviously, the you know. The, that's what the medal's called. But the interesting part about this one is that it's actually. Let me see if I can get this focus. So it's actually named on the back. Oh, that's neat. Uh, sorry, let me see if I can you know, back it up a little bit. So it's engraved on the back, and it's got a slot brooch, so I can 
based on that, I can tell, based on the hand engraving on the back and the slot brooch, I know this is a World War II medal. And it's named to a uh, Joseph P. Henkel. I looked him up. I was able to find his enlistment records, um, but unfortunately I wasn't able to find much beyond that. He did enlist in PA, but then he was from Michigan um, after the war, and he wound up, you know, he eventually passed away in Florida. But I haven't been able to find out much on his service history, so I'll probably send everybody for his records just to find out what division he was in, you know, where he served, and you know, all of that information. But whenever I see these, especially named ones, I always like picking them up because, you know, it's just fun to research them. You know, it's just a, uh, you know, everybody looks at these and they're like, uh, you know, what am I going to do with that? They want, you know, the Valor medals and things like that. But mm -hmm. I like picking these up. They're, you know, there's there's many of them. And you'd be surprised sometimes just the information you can find out and who yeah. it may have belonged to, you know. Um, so that was uh, the first shop that I stopped at. The second shop, which... Has turned up some nice items, but this one kind of uh, caught me so by surprise. So this is a USM-1 helmet. Um, you know, this would have been used in World War II and then was used up until the 80s. Eventually, they replaced it with the Kevlar helmet. Or, um, so this one, unfortunately, is, uh, if you can see, is a bit rusted out. But it is a front seam helmet, which tells yeah. me that it's World War II manufacture. And then it has sewn chin straps, which tells me also that it was a World War II helmet. Um, on the inside, you know, this is where kind of, uh, let's see, you can kind of yeah. see some of the green coming through. So, you know, it retains some of the paint inside. And then there's a little number painted on the inside, 28. As for what the significance of that number is, I don't know. Um, a lot of times Navy helmets had numbers on them, and it had no significance other than that was the order that they were in the, uh, you know, available f f to be pulled out from, you know, whatever rack they were being stored on. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, I was just, I was kind of like, ah, you know, I have plenty of M1 helmets, but the, when I pulled out the liner, so this is the piece that would actually sit inside the helmet and it has all of the webbing on the inside, um, you know, so this would protect the person's head or make it more comfortable for them to wear rather than the steel helmet. But what interests me about it was it had this EGA on the front, so this would be a M37 EGA for an enlisted man, and you can see we have some vertigris build up on the um, the rivets and on the EGA. So that kind of tells me that you know this set has been together for some time. So this was likely a helmet used by a Marine. Now as to when, I'm not sure, but I'm I'm leaning towards maybe occupation period, and the reason why is on the inside the um, the, the sweat band is dated 1945, so you know it's likely either you know post-war occupation or even Korean War, because um, they were still using this uh, variation of the EGA at that time. Uh, it wasn't until the 60s that they actually you know changed the uh, the EGA design, but that's what attracted me to it. You know, this was a, a nice little pickup and it didn't sent me back much. You know, I could probably resell the liner if I wanted to. And you know, make my money back, uh, maybe a little bit more. But I just thought it was a cool piece. I probably, I probably won't sell it. Actually, I'm thinking of cleaning up the vertigris because I just don't want it to uh, eat away at the EGA or you know cause any damage to the liner. Uh, I was kind of hesitant. You know, I took some pictures beforehand because it kind of adds the provenance to it that it's been together. Because you know, somebody yeah. could easily just attach that EGA and you'd never know. But at least I have the before pictures before I clean it, and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, the inside's pretty good shape. It's got a little, you know, it's got the vertigris issues on the inside, as you can see on the uh, the A washers, and then the uh, the sweatband seemed better at age. But all, overall, it's missing a nape strap. There would actually be a strap that goes across here that connects to these two rivets. But so overall, on the, on the helmet, um, yeah. the, the bales on the helmet, so yeah. what, what's the significance of a swivel veil, veil versus that static veil that's, that's on there? All right, so... Bail, loop, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, some people call it a loop, other people call it a bail. So, so the so this has a swivel bail, although it's it's rusted, so it's kind of hung up, so you can't really tell. But as you'll see, the uh, the bail. So this would be the swivel bail was produced or started being produced in 1943, late 1943. Um, but they didn't you didn't actually see them hit the field. So some people say they were at D-Day. There's a whole discrepancy about that, whether or not that's true or not. But um, you know, most people have the thought that you, they didn't actually make it over to Europe until after D-Day. 
um, and mostly with uh, replacement troops, you know, because there was some, you know, big losses during D-Day. But um, prior to that, you had what was called a fixed loop or a fixed bail, and basically the the bail itself didn't move. And actually, here what I'll do, I'll um, just to kind of showcase what I'm talking about. This so happens I have another helmet sitting over here. Um, so as you'll see on this one, the bales move around. And basically it was just a, a change in the design. So there was an issue with the fixed loops where they would actually break and you know you wouldn't really have much movement on the, um, the chin strap. So they went with a, a swivel bale and actually they kept that design until they discontinued using the M1 helmet. So, you know, helmets prior to 1943, or 43 and earlier, all had a fixed bail, and then post-43 you'll see the swivel bail start to appear, and it was just a change in the design, basically. So now you can use that to date, to date the helmet then, because you can pretty much... You can use that, you know, at first glance, and then each helmet is... Um, is uh, actually has a heat stamp on it. So there was there was two manufacturers of M1 helmets during World War II. There was McCord and Schluter. So th there are there is a chart where you can actually date your helmet, you know, pretty accurately down to the month, based on the heat lot that is on the helmet. So basically, you know, the heat lot would just say, you know, this was the lot of steel that was used to manufacture these helmets, and then mm -hmm. you know they were able to find records at the McCord factory to determine excuse me, when those helmets were, were manufactured. Now, Schluter, on the other hand, there is no definitive chart on that, and basically you kind of have to use other information like, you know, the uh, the types of um, chin strap and, you know, whether or not it's a fixed bail, swivel bail, et cetera, to try and determine what the era of manufacture or the age of manufacture or year of manufacture was. But um, the other thing, there is one more other. There is the uh, the... Unicorn, which is the D or the um, the D bail, and now a D bail is what you would see on a paratrooper line or a paratrooper helmet. So that's what okay. they used. Um, they had a major flaw because they would break relatively easily, and sometimes you'll find them. They've actually been um, brazed. The uh, the loop has been brazed back on because they've you know snapped off. If you find one of those, you're you're sitting on a pretty penny because they you know sell for some money. There were so few of them. And then, you know, they receive field repairs, or sometimes it would actually, you know, be have a, uh, a fixed bail or a swivel bail uh, reattached to it. So, um, but, so I thought that was cool. You know, you know, the thing that attracted me, obviously, was the EGA. You know, the, the helmet itself is, is, is pretty bad shape. But I'm, I'm not going to do much cleanup. I'm probably going to display the, the liner on top of the EGA, or I'm sorry, the liner on top of the helmet, and just leave it as is. So... Um, and one more item. Uh, this was uh, a couple days ago, and I was out for work, and it's in the New Jersey area. And so I stopped in the shop right up the street from where I was, uh, from another location I had to visit for work. And I saw this uniform. They had some nice military in there. And, you know, I saw this uniform, and I actually kind of, you know, passed on it the first day. And... I second-guessed myself and decided to go back the next day and kind of give it a better look over. So this is a, an officer's uniform, Marine Corps officer's uniform, World War II, and, um, you know, it has a... Let me pull it closer a little bit. So on the... Uh, above the left breast is a ribbon for the Pacific... or Asiatic Pacific campaign, and it's got one star signifying one campaign. Um, you know, other than that, it's pretty pretty blank uniform. But the but the nice part is that it actually does have a label on the inside, and it's named to the off you know provides the name of the officer, um, who the uniform was made for, and you know who wore it. Um, and then we have his uh, his overseas cover or garrison cover, or as the Marines would call it, the piss cutter. Um, so on here you have his lieutenant rank insignia, and then. EGA, the Eagle Globe and Anchor. Um, so these are nice. This is actually, you know, both are sterling. Um, you know, not common. And actually, the uh, the price of the two EGAs on here can, or pretty much pay for what I paid for the uniform. 
So the uniform was free, and then I could, if I ever wanted to sell it, the EGAs would be worth it. That was my wife, by the way, <laughs> passing through. <laughs> so, um, so that was pretty nice. So I'm going to do a quick screen share because, uh, you know, once I got this uniform home and started kind of researching it, um, it was nice because uh, there was a few newspaper articles. So this is uh, who the uniform is named to. His name is uh, John Keller. Uh, he was a lieutenant. Um, he actually eventually, uh, after the war, he um, he stayed in the reserves and uh, retired a major. So, you know, so this would have been his wartime uniform. I assume there was another uniform that he had um, that would have had his major rank insignia on it. Um, so here it's just kind of announcing that he uh, received his commission as a second lieutenant um, after graduating from Marine Officers Training School in Quantico, Virginia. Um, the next one is uh, the announcement of his marriage to uh, his wife, and uh, you know basically, <clears throat> you know provides information. He was from Pittsfield, uh, Pittsfield, Massachusetts, and he was married in 1943. And it kind of tells his background. He was he was a big guy. This is a big uniform. I'm I'm six two, and if I lost a couple pounds, I could probably actually fit into this. Most of the uniforms I I find. You know, my kid who's five years old can wear them. Um, but so he was a big guy. He played football. He was a captain of his football team. He actually played golf. So, <clears throat> you know, rare to find a large uniform like that. Here's another announcement regarding the marriage to his wife. Um, and then here's uh, his announcement. This is from 1943. And then it's an announcement that he uh, was promoted from a second to a first lieutenant. Uh, and it says, Lieutenant Keller is somewhere in the South Pacific, area unknown. And here is from 1945, Lieutenant John Keller, who has been flying with the Marines for 16 months in the Central Pacific War Area, has arrived in California. He's on home for furlough, visit with his family. So it says flying, which kind of threw me off because um, when, I, when I looked in the muster rolls, he is shown with... Um, uh, in Squadron 113 of the, um, sorry, I'm drawing a blank, the uh, 113th uh, Air Group for the Marines, but he's listed as a uh, Squadron Communications Officer, um, VMF 113, that's the word I was looking for, sorry. Uh, but it doesn't mention anything about him being a pilot, so I, I think that was just some, I think that was a, a newspaper reporter just kind of uh, using some verbiage that really didn't apply to what he was doing overseas, but I've sent away for his file, so I'm hoping to find out more information on that. So these were the muster rolls, and it kind of just details where he was and what he was doing, what his uh, rank was, uh, what his position in the Marines was, uh, you know, et cetera, where he was stationed, all of that information. And then this is just a close-up of the uh, the cover EGA, and you can see that it's Mark Sterling, and then it's um, got the maker's mark for... Uh, uh, hamburger Hillbottom, I think, is the uh, the maker, and then these are the uh, collar EGAs, you know, same manufacturer. And then here's the uh, the maker or the tag on the inside that has his name on. It's a J.M. Keller. So I was able to look on the muster rolls, and this was the only name that matched. So I'm fairly certain, you know, it's the same guy. And that's it. So all right. that was, that, that's all I have for tonight. Um, it looks like we're kind of getting to our our end time on the show anyway. Yeah. So. Hey, but I have a revelation here. What's no. that? Okay, so you said that my waterman might be worth three hundred dollars, and I was pretty jazzed about that. Yeah. Okay, so hold on to your hats. Uh oh. <laughs> Let's see. Hold on to your hats here. I was pretty amazed at this. Let's go here and you see that? You gotta share it. Oh, did I, did I share it? No. No. Uh, Not sure on. yet. All right, hold on. Uh, <laughs> share and then Thank there you, you go. Nice. So this is the green completing hole. history. Look at this, you guys. Wait, check this out. He just found this pen. Twenty five hundred. Look, it's the same pen. Wait, check it out. 
Very it's nice. The, it's the same pen with the same little trim around there. Yes! I can't <laughs> believe it. Wow. Look at that, you guys. That's awesome. Oh, my God. I mean, I thought I was just jazzed with three, four hundred bucks, but look, it's got the Waterman on the end there. Fine. You know, it's the same era. It's the same nib. Uh, look at the nib. It's an ideal. Uh, let's see. Ideal. Uh, I'll, I'll give you 20 bucks for it. Yeah, there you go. I'll double your money. <laughs> I mean, either there was 18 bids. That was a furious. These are highly collected, and uh, that wasn't even the highest. I didn't even press high high price first. This just wow. came out first. Yeah. Wow. But, you guys want to go to see what's what's the uh, <laughs> the highest price paid for a Waterman? Let's see. Here we go. Let's go. Uh, search. And then, oh, 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 I didn't have anything typed in. Sorry, uh, uh, no, nothing typed in. Okay, Waterman fountain pen. Uh, should I put vintage first or? Yeah. Oh, is no. it ideal? Is it ideal or? I, uh, it's ideal. You left the R out in Waterman. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, and then we'll go to sold listings. And then we'll go to high price in a second here. Highest price is right uh, here. Let's see. Oh my God, three thousand dollars! If you had the yellow one, you'd be at three. You three thousand, or the is that pink? Looks kind of a pinkish, brownish color. That's twenty-five. That's fourteen. <laughs> Salmon. It might be kind of tortoise oh, shell. Yeah, it's got it's got gold in the yeah, in the golden layer and filigree yeah. in the yeah. yeah. yeah that's cool. Wow. Yeah, that's well, a pretty that's a pretty special pen. I'll I'll keep you guys posted. I think that's pretty incredible. Nice. Yeah. There is lovely green and brown Patrician Waterman <laughs> pen. Oh, Hi guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I gotta run. I have to okay. late getting done. <laughs> hey, you right, guys, man. have fun, everybody. Catch All you right. next, next time. Nice two stuff. weeks. We'll be back in two weeks. Yep, yep. Okay. Cool. That's awesome, Drew. Oh my All God. Right. You know what? It might not be the twenty-five hundred dollar one, but wow. Yeah, I know. That's amazing. That's a nice little find. I'm sure you'll 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 make yeah. some good money off of that. And you know, I looked. He, he started out at twenty four ninety nine, and then it soared to twenty five hundred. Nice. Uh, wow. You know. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a cocktail. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Nice, nice uh, celebration. That that one, yeah. Cocktail. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's tonight's episode of uh, the Catacomb, and just want to thank everybody who uh, was on the show. And you know, like we said in the beginning of the show, we're gonna change up the format a bit and we won't be back until uh july 30th i believe would be the next date so there will not be a show next week but july 30th we'll resume our show now stay tuned to the facebook page because we're still kind of working out the time uh we're, we're toggling back and forth between nine o'clock eastern time or nine thirty eastern time so uh just just keep, you know look, look at the facebook page stay tuned to there and uh you know just be prepared for a nine o'clock start time or a nine thirty start time but thank you everyone and see you in two weeks all right guys thanks guys good night good night